it should continue for other people too. This same, this same type of um, heightened awareness should be continued for everyone. Everyone. And that goes for you all too. Joe, your words at the memorial service uh, were very touching to many people. And I'm wondering if you've heard from people who heard your words about being inspired by Gabby's life and also leaving that relationship uh, yeah, you know what, why don't you do that? Okay. Hi, my name is Cassandra Brianna Ramirez, and I went missing September 2018. The worst gift I could have given my mother for her birthday was her having to report me. I was 25 years old at the time I disappeared. Many theories are out there, yet none by me know the truth of what happened to me. There are still a few people out there who know, but don't care. Or maybe they just fear my fate shall be theirs as well. Truth be told, there was one who knew, and now he is no longer here. A dear friend of mine took my story to his grave, yet I'm sure he was not the only one. What happened and where I am was too great for him to bear. Al Pone. I need to be found and brought home. It's been too long. I have a son, a mom, siblings, nieces, nephew, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, friends as well as unfinished business. I want to be with my loved ones. I want to be home. I want to sing, play, shout, and pout. I deserve better. I deserve to be home. What happened to me can only happen to anybody. Don't us women deserve the right to be safe? Don't we deserve a life lived without looking over our shoulders? Why should us women be deprived of basic human rights and abilities under the thumb of a man and government who are quick to hit, fight, make disappear that which they find no longer useful. Why won't our own government protect us? Men should be protecting their women, wives, mothers, and daughters, not fighting against laws that can protect them. You, me, us. Our laws come short in protecting us, and we need to take a stand. Will you stand for me? Will you stand for the other women who are missing, exploited, murdered. I challenge our government. Let's talk. Let us stop pretending this isn't happening in our own backyards. God bless. University to enjoy the weekend of the Michigan, Michigan State game, but he never came home tonight. His dad and mom talking to Fox 2 about the tip line and how they're holding on hope that Brendan Santo will come home. It's seven weeks to the day since 18-year-old Brendan Santo went missing from the streets of East Lansing on October 29th, his parents speaking out on television for the first time. The hope is by, by having this interview and what we've done on social media is to get 
keep getting his face out there. His picture is getting out there, shared on social media thousands of times. Because of that, leads have been coming into the tip line, apparent sightings of Brendan. We have had uh, multiple sightings and, and people have been great. They've called, they've called the tip line, the, the challenge for the tip line. By the time they get to it, they can't, there's not much for them to do because he would have been gone. So we, we want to reinforce and people have been great. If you, if you see him, you think it's him, um, the CPD has told us call 911. Some of the callers saying they saw him in the Lansing area, although some tips coming from as far away as Oklahoma. Please keep searching. Please keep searching. We we just we need to find him. Look through social media. Look look everywhere. If you see someone that looks like him, call 911. Brendan drove from Grand Valley State University to East Lansing. He was going to the big game that weekend and even packed a Halloween costume for that Saturday night. Friday night, he was on his way from one dorm to another when he vanished. He was at Yakely Hall heading towards, um, I think they call it the Brody area, going to Raylor Hall, um, walking by himself. So he had, um, and, and that's where he was headed. His cell phone was last pinged on his walk toward that hall here at Michigan Avenue and Beale late Friday night, shortly before midnight. It was the weekend of the Michigan, Michigan State game. So the campus was packed with people. Jog their memory, look at their phones. We know people were taking pictures, videos, anything that they think that may be him, if they could review those send them into MSU PD, you know, they can look at them. Brendan seemed to be in good spirits, his parents say. The last text messages he had were with his friends telling them he was on his way. He shared his location with uh, with one of the friends. So that, that all seemed normal, which is, you know, that's our challenge. Um, you know, they've, they've communicated that to the police. They're like, yeah, he was texting us normal and, you know, his phone just went out. Everyone said he was joking around as normal. He was... He was just his normal self. Brad and Wendy praying they can find their son and put their arms around him one day soon. But they need your help to get there. So here's the deal. Remember, if you think you've seen Brendan, don't call the tip line right away. Call 911 so local, local law enforcement in that area can get involved. Any other tips can be dialed in to 844-99-MSUPD. That's 844-99-MSUPD. Remember, the most important piece here, Monica, you don't have to leave your name. Chelsea Justin. Kobo disappeared in Sunset Park after getting into a taxi. Her mother speaking exclusively with News 12's Marilyn Buckley on this cold case, saying she is desperate for answers. I feel like I'm stuck. It's hard to fathom five years have passed. That's a long time. For Rose Kobo, it's been five long years that in some ways have felt endless as she continues searching for her missing daughter, Chelsea Kobo. Let, let us have some some understanding. It's never going to be closed. It's never going to be peaceful. Chelsea was last seen getting into a cab on May 7, 2016, never to come home again. I'm always looking. Always. And life is so precious. Tomorrow's promise to no one. From stopping people in the street and praying with strangers on the sidewalk, Rose's will to find Chelsea has only grown stronger. Someone somewhere in some window someplace saw something. Chelsea was last seen walking around in this area five years ago. Since her disappearance, her mother's been handing out these flyers, hoping someone in the area saw something and speaks up. Rose now partnering with 911missing.org, a website aimed at helping others whose loved ones have also gone missing, using technology for tips and leads to help with the search. I just like her to come home one way or the other. I'm asking people to please have some compassion. You could always live a tip, give a tip. You all know the tip hotline. She tells us her fight for justice to bring Chelsea home is far from over, hoping someone. Chelsea, I will never stop looking for you. And you know, and I know that you know that because I'm relentless. In Sunset Park, Mary Lynn Buckley, New. <laughs> I like looking at the moon. <gasps> oh, you're getting a picture of the moon? Mm -hmm. Or you're getting a video of the moon? Video. You were so excited. All right, oh. time for bed now. But 
But I still want to look at some stars. Um, hmm. How about if we do a, a line of a pattern with the, the stars and maybe we can shape something? <laughs> what is that called? Um, astrology. Astrology, right. So let's, let's do astrology. So... How many times can the human heart break? I don't even know how many times mine does in a day. A mother still waiting for her boy to return. His name is Michael Vaughn. Michael is just five years old. He disappeared without a trace last summer on July 27th. CBS 2's Michaela Ellich spoke one-on-one -on -one with an anguished mother who refuses to give up hope. 138. Today makes 138 days since the last time I got to hug him or kiss him. 138 days since Michael Vaughn was last seen here in the quiet town of Fruitland. I never thought in a million years that, you know, this would happen here. We, we live in a small town. We live in a small area. Everybody pretty much knows each other or kind of knows each other or sees each other on a frequent basis. But I never... I never imagined that one of my babies would be not here. It's a day she can never forget. I don't understand why that day was so different. I. One minute he's here and people see him and the next he's gone. Michael's monster trucks and Spider-Man doll are still in their living room. A constant reminder. He has probably every grave digger monster truck there is. But he got this on his birthday on June 24th and <laughs> he was so excited. Fruitland police have been tirelessly searching for Michael throughout homes and yards, fields and waterways. And around town, posters of Michael can be seen on just about every street. There are so many people caring and trying to help and helping. And I really couldn't imagine trying to do this on my own or... Uh, any of us and our family to do this on our own. There's it's I don't think I will ever be able to say thank you enough. As the days passed and Brandy waits, she tells me she will never stop looking, never stop hoping. I just pray to God he can see something or know that we're And we're not giving up hope and we're gonna find him. I just hope he can see something. As the investigation continues, CBS2 will keep Michael Vaughn's name in the spotlight. And anyone with information about this case should call Fruitland Police, or if you see Michael, call 911.